Maybe a way angle I'd like to look at it, because you mentioned the um, science fiction world. Uh, in the 20th century, there are authors like Aldous Huxley wrote A Brave New World, George Orwell wrote 1984, which I think uh, your book 2084 is kind of uh, taking a spin off of that title. But it seems like in the 20th century, they were, while dreaming up of some of the technology, they were also addressing some of the ethical possible uh, ethical issues that could be harmful is these worlds they create are some dystopian rather than utopian. Um, uh, what impact do you think these kinds of novels in the 20th century had on just where we are today and the, getting us to where we are in the world today? Did they uh, have an impact? I think they, they had a, a pretty considerable impact, really. And it's very interesting that you, you would raise the, those novels. Um, George Orwell and Aldous Huxley took <clears throat> a very different uh, tack on these things. Um, and uh, one of the things is that <clears throat> the idea of big data that George Orwell envisaged in 1984, the idea that Big Brother is watching you and surveillance technology, and it's very important to realize that he uh, saw this kind of stuff. And so it's, it's extreme danger. And incidentally, I should make the record straight. Uh, the title 2084 does indeed come from <laughs> spinning off Orwell's book, but it wasn't my idea. It was the idea of a colleague of mine who's a very well-known atheist who's debated me uh, on several occasions, the Oxford chemistry professor, Peter Atkins. And he, when he heard I was writing this, he said, I've got a title for you. So I do acknowledge him in the, in the beginning of that book. That's great. So it, it's very important. That ethical issue that's raised, of course, is the invasion of privacy. And I noticed that when you referred to Amazon, you said you didn't quite like them doing Doing that. Now, this is actually a doorway into a huge problem. It's a huge problem in several directions. Let me first of all talk about it more in terms of Western economies, where there's vast money to be made in the following way, and I call it surveillance capitalism, which is the title of a book by a brilliant uh, Emerita Professor Susanna Zuboff at MIT. And she points out that what is happening with these powerful search engines is they're harvesting data about you and me. And what we don't often realize is they're selling it off to third parties without our permission. And so it is a real invasion of privacy. And her book is being taken extremely seriously by major players in the world economy. And of course, the interesting thing is, here we are, we have our smartphones and they are tracking us. They're harvesting information, where we go, how we meet, they might even be listening to our conversations, who knows? And yet we do this voluntarily. And <laughs> someone has made the point, isn't it odd that we invite a spy into our houses because uh, our so-called digital assistants like Alexa and Siri and all these kind of things. Again, who knows what's going on behind the scenes. So that presents a real problem. But then going back to Orwell and his big brother is watching you idea. There we have surveillance and surveillance, I often call it communism, but it's not only in communist countries, but it's well known in China that surveillance technology is being used for purposes that uh, I find, frankly, very disturbing. Now, let's step back from this uh, for a moment. You can immediately see that facial recognition is very useful for a police force who can pick out uh, criminals from a, a football crowd uh, or can uh, recognize uh, people in the street or coming into a country and so on and arrest them. But unfortunately, what can be used for surveillance in a good way can also be used to 
control people. And this is what sadly is happening, particularly in Xinjiang in China, where the Uyghur population are really being yeah. uh, surveilled to such an extent, it's almost unbelievable. And a couple of years ago, there was a major article on this in one of the Time or Newsweek. And the Chinese author said, look, in the West, you've got all this technology too. Uh, and the only thing is, it it's not yet in the hands of a strong central government, but it may be one day. And of course, I, I read that even in this country, the police force would like to have that kind of technology. And the difficulty is that you can see a benign and positive use, but you can see the extreme danger of it. Mm. And the invasion of privacy in some parts of the world is utterly extreme. There's the famous social credit system, again, being rolled out across China, where you are monitored all the time. And if you do anything that uh, doesn't fit in with the current system, you get penalized and you suddenly find you can't use your credit card or you can't get a seat on a plane or you can't get uh, an upgrade in your job etc etc and this is actually working now this is not futuristic speculation this is stuff that's being rolled out all over the place mm -hmm. so uh, there's an area and this is still narrow ai there this isn't artificial general intelligence mm -hmm. and then there's another huge area here the whole question of artificial intelligence used in the direction of automatic weapons and, and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So you're raising very big issues and, and the ethical issues would um, will be <clears throat> absolutely to the, they're a wake up call for us to, to take this kind of thing absolutely uh, seriously. Yes. Aldous Huxley, I think by contrast, he tended to feel that we'd be overcome, we'd fall in love with our technology, whereas Orwell thought it would oppress us. But we seem to be having both things happening in our society together. We fall in love with it, and it eventually takes us prisoner.